Okay, so we're gonna start out with a solution of saturated ammonium chloride. Uh, so I have my saturated ammonium chloride in this little bottle here. Uh, at the bottom, you can, at the bottom, you can tell that there is some solid at the bottom, so that's how we know that it is a saturated solution. Um, but for the reaction, we only want to get the solution part. Um, so be careful with the dropper to only pick up the solution part, not pick up the solid. So I'm going to add about two milliliters of that to my test tube. And then you want to record your observations for this ammonium chloride. And then we're going to add dropwise um, sodium. We're going to add dropwise hydrochloric acid until we see some kind of change. Okay, so we've had a change in our test tube. Uh, it's not the same kind of change that you've seen in the other reactions. We've actually made a solid. So you can see that the solid is starting to kind of fall down to the bottom of our test tube. We have made a precipitant in this um, reaction. Uh, so we started out with a clear solution and now we have a white solid that has formed. So you're going to make sure that you have recorded that change in your table one and now we're going to take that same reaction and we're going to um, that same test tube and put it into a hot water bath. So I need to make that hot water bath and see what happens when we heat up this test tube. Okay, so I'm putting this test tube into my hot water bath. I'm just going to set it in there and let it allow it to heat up and we'll come back and look at it once that hot water has heated up. So as our water has heated up and we put our test tube in this hot water bath, you can see that we have less of that um, solid that's in our solution. We, we don't see as much on the bottom of our test tube. Okay, so I think that you get the idea of what's happening inside this test tube when we put it in the hot water. Uh, I'm not going to wait any longer before moving on to the next part of the experiment. I'm just going to set that aside, kind of push it out of the way. We'll look at that uh, in a few minutes again to see if all of that um, solid does dissolve. Um, so in the next part of the experiment, I want to, to a test tube, add some solid ammonium chloride. So I measured it out at the balance. So you can see here it's a white crystalline substance. This is uh, ammonium chloride. I have about uh, a gram measured out on a piece of white paper. So I'm going to add that to my test tube and then I'm going to add water to that and um, pay attention to what happens when I dissolve these crystals. So I may have not used a big enough test tube um, but right away when I hold it down here, I can feel that this is getting colder, okay? So I'll keep trying to add water to that um, to try to dissolve all these crystals. But yeah, when I hold it like this in my hand, I can tell that that's gotten colder. Um, so from that, you want to be able to decide, is this reaction um, exothermic or endothermic? If our reaction, if our uh, test tube feels cold to the touch. In my small test tube, I probably didn't need to add a whole gram. Um, but they are dissolving in that water. And as they dissolve in that water, that test tube feels cold to the touch. Okay, so you should be able to make all of your observations at this point. Um, so we've gone through three different reaction types. Um, so in table one, you're just recording initial, um, initial observations followed by what happens when we add whatever stress it was. In table two, um, you're going to decide what is that stress. So you want to be as specific as possible um, when you tell what that stress is. Um, make sure that you go back and think about what kind of reaction you're doing. What is in your reaction? Um, so if you are adding an acid to a base, you should know that acids and bases react. Um, make sure that you're very specific in what that stress is and what happens in that reaction. Uh, and then you can tell which way the equilibrium shifted, how do you know uh, based on your observations and 
um, there are questions at the end of lab that you can answer as well, that you'll need to answer as well. Um, so I'm just going to make sure that I clean up all of my test tubes, put them into the correct waste containers, um, and then I will wash those test tubes um, with soap and water. Okay, so this is the end of the chemical equilibrium lab.